Hi, this is Lois Haggard from the New Mexico Department of Health. In this video, we're going to look at the IBIS PH View application and how you can create a query interface for your users. All of the action happens right here in the XML files. To find the XML files, you'll want to go to your Tomcat folder on your C drive and you can navigate the tree down through web apps, IBIS view content, XML, query, module, and these are the, all of the query modules that I have in my Tomcat folder. We're going to look at the state pop module because that's what we're using for training. Inside the state pop folder are two files, two XML files, and a set of subfolders that are used by the XML files. Let's look at the selection file first. This file does nothing to run the query. It's only used for navigation to the query builder page. I'm going to repeat that. Here's the selection page that's created by the selection file. The selection file does nothing to run the query. It's only used for navigating to a query builder page. When you click on one of these links, it takes you to a query builder page. Here's what the XML file looks like. We talked about XML files back in part two when we looked at the dimension files. You may remember that these special tags define XML elements. Here the, is a section tag. The section element is used in the query interface pages a lot. It is the horizontal bar that expands when you click on it. You can compare the contents of this file to what you see on the selection page. The other file in that folder is the module XML file. Module XML is a generic name for this type of file. This one is named statepopmain.xml, but you will hear me refer to this type of file as a module XML file. It's the main file that creates the query builder page. It uses the files from the other subfolders in the module folder by including them in the code. More on this a little more on that a little later. <clears throat> Here's what the state population query builder page looks like. And here is the XML that created that page. It's a there the file consists of a query module element, and everything that's in this file is contained in this one big element. It's the parent element and it has child elements within it. Here's a child element called org unit name. This element controls the contents of the page footers on the query builder and results pages. And here are some of the parameters that we saw in the query application URL in a previous video. This is where these particular name value pairs get set. Query configuration selection sets the link for the select a different measure left navigation button and the breadcrumbs at the top of the page. Configuration is an element that includes information to create a unique query builder page. Note here the func parameter, another of the name value pairs in the query application URL. Here's an include command, ibis include with a path and a file name. This includes an XML element from one of the files in the other subfolders, the data source subfolder. Here's what that file looks like. Using that include command is just like we copied this entire XML element and inserted it right into the module XML file. There are two configuration elements in this module XML file one for state that we've been looking at and another one for county that I've hidden here. I have both the state and county configurations in this one module XML file, but I don't use the county information in the state query configuration, so I've included the county inform I'm sorry, I've included the county information in the module XML file, but excluded it from the state query configuration using these query exclude elements. 
After the configurations are some overviews and sections, and then some dimension files that are used in this query. The dimension files are used for both user selections and also for cross-by variables. They have a dual duty. If you want to see what the module XML element looks like all fleshed out with all the included elements inserted, you can click on the XML page source left navigation button from the Query Builder page. If I scroll down, you can see here where that USB-C data source element is inserted right into the XML for the Query Module Query Builder page. Before we leave the Query Builder page, I want to look at the page URL because it has some special characteristics. There are three parts to the URL. The first is the web server address. Next is a special URL pattern that tells IBIS PH View to use the Query Builder XSLT to format the web page. Remember, the view application transforms the XML into HTML when it responds to the URL request. This part of the URL tells IBISView which XSLT style sheet to use for that transformation. Finally is the path to the module XML file, state pop, state pop main, and then the name of the configuration within that file. This is the end of this video. Part 7 in the series will review the section XML element.